Hello everyone, I'm Yiga Chen from Institute of Information Engineering, Chinese Academy of Sciences. This talk is about mobile encrypted traffic classification. In particular, I'm going to introduce how to utilize message type inference to realize the encrypted traffic classification for TLS 1.3. First of all, I would like to introduce two kinds of feature-based encrypted traffic classification, namely sequence feature-based encrypted traffic classification and attribute feature-based encrypted traffic classification. The sequence feature widely used in the classification include message type sequences and uh, packet length sequences. Many existing works adopt developer sequence oriented models such as Markov chain models and deep learning based models. Krosetsky et al. first proposed to use first order Markov chains to generate a Markov model of message type sequences for each application and classify encrypted traffic. Then, Shen et al. proposed to use second order Markov chain fingerprint and certificate packet length. Liu et al. tried to apply Markov chain models to packet length sequences and proposed multi attribute Markov probability fingerprints to handle the large number of unique packet lenses. Liu et al. also proposed a deep learning based approach named Flow Sequence Network to further improve the classification accuracy. The FSNet adopts recurrent neural network to build an autoencoder structure for packet lens feature extraction and conduct application classification based on the feature vectors. The attributes commonly used to model TLS 1.2 encrypted traffic include statistical features and stream features. Taylor et al. focus the statistical feature of the burst in the flow. Based on the statistical features, they propose an automatic fingerprint framework called AppScanner, which can identify the mobile application of encrypted traffic in real time. Chen et al. proposed a string feature-based approach named multi-attribute associated fingerprints. The MAAF explores several different attributes, including domain names, certificates, and application data lenses to train the classifier for mobile encrypted traffic classification. This slide presents the declarative classification effectiveness of the state-of-the-art methods. All these methods reach more than 90% TPR or accuracy. With the continued development of TLS 1.3, existing works are facing the problem of poor applicability. The left figure is a schema of TLS 1.2 communication between peers, while the right one is a schema of TLS 1.3 communication between peers. A full TLS session consists of handshake messages and application data messages. Compared with TLS 1.2, we can notice that many real handshake message types are masked by application data in TLS 1.3, including encrypted extensions, certificate request, server client certificate, certificate verify, and server client finished. Therefore, the approach designed for TLS 1.2 may face a significant drop in classification accuracy. Although most handshake messages are encrypted and masked as application data messages, the message length and some plain text handshake information are still available, so we can exploit this information to infer the types of encrypted handshake messages as alternatives. This message type inference problem is similar to a sequence tagging task called named entity recognition. The table presents a comparison example between the NER and the message type inference problem. 
The NER example in the table left means to determine the name entity of the sentence words, while the message type inference in the table right is to predict the real message type of the message feature tuple. A fairly common method to solve the NER problem is adopting a recurrent neural network, conditional random field network, where an encodes sequential words to predict named entity probability distribution in word level, and CRF integrates the neighbor tag information in sentence level. In this work, we propose a mobile encrypted traffic classification approach for TLS 1.3 based on message type inference. Our mobile encrypted traffic classification system consists of three modules, including data pre-processing, message type inference, and machine learning. The data pre-processing module extracts TLS 1.3 encrypted traffic for online raw traffic as system input and organizes this encrypted traffic into flows. For each TLS message, we can directly extract two features without modification, namely message length and visible message type, and store these two features as a feature tuple. Therefore, we can represent TLS 1.3 encrypted flows as feature tuple sequences for subsequent processing. For all input encrypted flows, the RNCF network tries to recover the real message types of encrypted handshake messages through rigorous analysis of feature tuple sequences and outputs the predicted message type sequences which is called message type inference. Based on the real message types inferred by the RNCIF network, we can format the sequence of feature tuples into a uniform vector of message lens, where each dimension stores the length of a specific type message. Finally, we can train a cluster for the uniform vectors through supervised machine learning and implement classification for the uniform vectors of other encrypted flows. For the captured traffic to be classified, we first select out TLS 1.3 encrypted packets and organize these packets into independent flows. The organization of flows generally relies on IP addresses, port numbers, and TCP sequence and acknowledgement numbers. The basic transmission units of TLS flows are messages that are resembled by TCP packets. Compared with TLS 1.2, TLS 1.3 flows encrypt many handshake messages and mask them with application data to protect user privacy in communication. For each TLS 1.3 flow, we extract the message length and the visible message types of all messages to form a feature tuple sequence. In general, mobile application will find the optimal server by querying the recursive DNS server. We can find out the related DNS traffic by comparing the answer record of DNS traffic and the server IP address of the flow. However, we cannot get the DNS traffic in the following situations. First one, the application connects with server through hard-coded IP addresses. Second, the application obtains server IP addresses through an alive TLS session with the connected server. Third, the client adopts DOT or DOH. To solve this sequence labeling problem, we propose an RNNCIF network that consists of an embedding layer, a recurrent neural network, and a conditional random field. The embedding layer embeds feature tuples into embedding vectors for the subsequent numerical calculation. Compared with scalar message lenses, 
the embedding vectors has multiple dimensions to store more feature information. Besides, the embedding metrics are trainable during module training. Besides, the embedding metrics are trainable during the model training, and we can learn the optimal values of the embedding vectors. The LSTM can integrate the information of all elements in sequence order, which determines its suitability for processing sequence input. The conditional random field is a statistical model that considers neighboring information to make structured predictions. In this paper, we connect a CIF network after the RNN layer to form an RNN CIF network, which combines the features of past inputs and the neighborhood tag information at sentence level. When we require a high accurate encrypted traffic classifier, we should adopt all available features in both the training of the classifier. We adopt three supervised machine learning methods to train an effective classifier on these feature vectors for mobile encrypted traffic classification. The C4.5 is a landmark algorithm to generate a decision tree for a given set of feature vectors. In detail, the C4.5 adopts the normalized information gain as its splitting criterion to build the decision tree, so the training and the prediction of C.5 are remarkably efficient. The random forest is an example learning method designed for classification or regression tasks. The XGBoost is an optimized gradient boosting decision tree implementation designed for both efficiency and effectiveness. To evaluate the effectiveness of our proposed classification approach, we first need to collect a TLS 1.3 dataset and a TLS 1.3 traffic dataset with ground truth message types. The active trace set scheme collects mobile application traffic by tracking the mobile phone and trying to operate mobile application to generate online traffic of the specific mobile applications. To collect encrypted traffic of TLS 1.3 employed applications, we adopt active trace set collection scheme and collection array word dataset that contains 52,019 encrypted flows of 14 mobile applications. The table presents a summary of experimental dataset. We also collect a TLS 1.3 traffic dataset with TLS decryption keys. Based on the TLS decryption keys, we can decrypt TLS handshake messages and recover message type ground truth to support the training of the RNCF network. We first study the effectiveness of RNCF network in inferring the real message types. We evaluate the RNCF network on the TLS 1.3 traffic dataset with ground truths. The table gives the experimental results of using LSTM and GRU for message type inference. The FE scores of both LSTM and GRU are very high. Then we study the impact of using inferred message types on classification accuracy. The figure shows the comparison results of inferred message types in mobile encrypted traffic classification. We can find that when the number of message lengths takes from 5 to 11, the classification accuracy of using message types is larger. Besides, the accuracy disparity between using message types and not using increases first and then decreases. This may be because when the number of messages is small, aligning the message lenses of the same message type can reasonably avoid the information deviation caused by the dimension dislocation of the feature vectors. Then we study the effect of feature combination. 
we notate the length of the relevant DNS packet, the length of handshake messages, the length of application data messages as F1, F2, and F3, respectively, and use the combination of notation to indicate the combination of features. The figure shows the experimental results of different feature combinations. As shown in the figure, the classification accuracy increases with the enrichment of the features. We can find that when we only use one feature for machine learning, the length of application data messages can provide more discrimination information than the other two features. This may be because the length of application data messages are relevant to the payload transmission pattern of the application. We also compare the classification results of using different machine learning models as presented in the table. We find that the XGBoost is better than the other two models in both accuracy and F1 score. The C4.5 and the Random Forest performs well. We compare our proposed approach with three sequence-based state-of-the-art approaches. The table presents the experimental results of comparison with existing approaches. As shown in the table, the accuracy and F1 score of MTI are better than the other approaches. The accuracy of SOB and MAMPF decreases because most handshake messages are masked by application data messages. This is all of the presentation. For more details, you can contact me by email. And thanks for your attention and hearing.